The following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We're in a different part of the room today with part of my Batman collection behind me and some autographed posters and and Batman. <laughs> anyway, we have a fun show for you guys today. Um, we have two great guests, Tracy Birdsall and Paul Taylor. Hopefully we're not going to have a problem with Paul Taylor because he thought he was on earlier. Um, so I'm trying to get in touch with him and um, uh, he's not in he's not in. Uh, he's not in California. Oh, here he is calling. So, Ron, talk for a minute, and let me go. Talk, everybody. Talk. About it. talk. Jimmy, I hate you. you Can I talk, talk about how much I hate Jimmy? Just Can we talk. do Say that on you? Yeah. You're annoying me. I'm so upset, folks. It's taking forever to finish the bathroom, dressing room. All my clothes are piled in my living room on top of sofas, chairs, dining room tables, all over. I can't find anything to wear. Everything is wrinkled. It's just, <sighs> just a friggin' mess. But other than that, I have to have a little sip of this. It's orange soda, by the way. I don't drink beer or alcohol. Mm -mm. Alcohol dries out your skin, makes you wrinkled. So people that do not drink at all have better skin and are less wrinkled. So they say. Oh, that's good. Now he's talking to our star because a lot of stars are dumb, not meaning him. But most stars, the reason they're, they're actors is because they don't know how to do anything themselves. So they like being directed and being told what to do. They have assistants. The assistant does all the work. It says, wake up, get up, take a shower, shave, comb your hair, look good. In an hour, you have to do an interview. In three hours, you do a written interview. You know, that baloney. So they become physically immobile, mentally immobile, and physically immobile. Now, is he okay? Yep, he's coming on. He's our second guest, you guys. And uh, we had the time zones mixed up because he's in Texas. And uh, he is coming on. It's going to be great. And I'm super excited about it. Um, so we have two great guests today. We have Tracy Birdsall coming on. She's a beautiful lady. She's an action star. She also does lots of comedy, um, so it should be a lot of fun. And then we have Pinhead himself coming on, Paul Taylor. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, we want to say hi to the chat room. Teresa Sabin is in the chat room. Don Hinton is in the chat room. B. Claudia, Boomer Mays. Um, hope everybody is well. They say they love your hair. My hair. I. You know why? I'm, I'm playing a mad scientist in a movie that we are almost funding. And I was playing around with it, seeing what I could look like as a mad scientist, you know, so I had it going well, like this. Everybody says you're having an excellent hair day. Excellent. I think it looks like shit, but that's besides. Everybody, like, loves it. Well, anyway, um, it's because I'm going to be a mad scientist. I know. I know what formula is to make. What do you think? So I wanna, I'm not a good scientist. I want to show everybody. So Saturday is my birthday. I'm going to be 58. This is one of my birthday presents that Ron got me. It's Chucky. I love Chucky. Everything Chucky. So Ron I wish got it me would this stab Chucky. him for real. And uh, I would have been worth what it costs. And if you know what's good for you, you are going Isn't this cool, though? Look at this. Honor and obey. I also got this great mummy. 
Um, but Chucky is the bomb, and the mummy is the bomb's too big. The mummy's too big, but you guys saw it on Facebook. So, so anyway, I'm gonna be 58 on Saturday, and I'm looking Look forward 78, to it. 78, but 58. Is oh, good. don't be mean. I hate you today. Today okay. I do not like Jimmy Starr. Oh, that's fine. No, today okay. I'm not happy. I'm not happy because my 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 clothes are all over. I can't find anything. I have a very nice shirt that I wore last Halloween, and it said horror movies on it, and it had all kinds of stuff. And every week before Halloween, I wanted to wear a shirt. If you noticed last week, I had a Halloween shirt, but I couldn't find it. So I put this one on. This is all Saturn and the Martians and whatever. That's a little weird, but it's not weird enough. Halloween, we have nice shirts that we're wearing. Are we going masquerade? Uh, B. Claudia says six, she's 63, so 58 is nothing. Um, 58? You're full of shit, you're 58. You're really like 88. No. You're an old man in, in, in a young and, man's And do you closet. guys notice how he's upset that our closet is all torn up, even though I have nothing to do with that? <laughs> I am so upset with what's going on in my bathroom right now. We're making it a Hollywood dressing room bathroom, which is the new in thing. And nobody goes in closets anymore and then into a bathroom to dress because it's, I guess, too much work. You got to walk two steps. People are lazy. So we have knocked down all the walls in the walk in closets. We've eliminated all of that jazz because it takes up all the bathroom. Now we have an enormous bathroom and all glass mirrored sliders where all our clothes goes up to nine feet high. And a Versace rug in the middle with a hassock in the middle. We could sit on to dress, double sink, beautiful mirrors, beautiful lighting, but nothing is there. The hassock's in the living room. The lights are in the living room. Everything is all over the place. There's no tile down in the bathroom. It's all concrete and plaster. The mirror, what's the matter? What, what are you doing? She needs a good smile. B does. B <laughs> needs a good picture of us because she makes those great Oh, no, I'm going to give smile. you a good picture. <clears throat> <laughs> Now smile also so she can have a few. Uh, yeah, I'll give you my... Now she said she wants a mean horror face. Can you give a mean horror face? Oh, can I ever? Just mention your name. Say your name. Ah, Jimmy Star! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun, you guys. Everything is great. But I love him, and it is his birthday, so I will be nice to him, but I hate him. You know, when you're married and you're upset, you have to find somebody to beat around, right? you got to hate somebody. I don't hate my daughters, God forbid, ever, or my dogs. So Jimmy's the closest thing <laughs> yeah, to me. That's nice. <laughs> so I, I like to hate him. You know why I like to hate him? Because there, oh, I got sand in my ears. Oh, living in Palm Springs is wonderful. Want some sand? It's beach. You could put your your, your beat feet in my ears. You could be at the beach. Anyway, um, I lost my mind. I forgot. Oh yeah, taking my frustration, anger, disappointment, and whatever contempt I have, I take it out on Jimmy. Then he feels he's done something bad. <laughs> and he comes over later and say, oh, I'm sorry. He doesn't even know what he's sorry for because <laughs> he doesn't even know why he's sorry. But I, say, I never do anything No, wrong. but I say to him, okay, you, yes, you should be sorry for what you did. And he has no idea what he did because he really has done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I make him feel guilty. Anyway. And then he'll say to me, oh, you don't have to cook tonight. Let's go out to dinner. And he gets all mushy, ushy, and sweet. He likes that. I love that. Then I like him again. And I say, oh, I'm sorry, honey, that I'm such a, I was going to say F word, but I didn't use it anymore. I'm sorry that I'm such a, a mean partner. No, you're not a mean partner. All right. So we want to we wanna welcome the chat room. Also, Pat Grant has joined us, and she's been working a lot, so she hasn't been in the chat room in a long time. Hey, Pat, I think she's in Canada still. And yeah. um I'm so excited that um, what's her name has moved to Las Vegas and soon is coming to our home. Yeah, you guys, Sherry mm -hmm. Nelson. Is Sherry Nelson is now in the United States, and We're I'm so be happy. Her soon. And I cannot wait for her to get here to Palm Springs, and she will sit between Jimmy and I on one of the shows, so you can really see how beautiful she is. Uh, not just a photograph, but how beautiful she is. We also want to give camera. a sh shout out to Laureen Landon, who's in the hospital. Oh, she just received oh, a kidney oh. transplant from her sister. She's our doing prayers, very well. We're sending love and prayers and everything our to be wonderful for her. prayers have been answered because I had to keep that secret, and I don't keep secrets. As you know, I like to tell people what's going on. I don't like to, I, I don't like to hide things. And I had to hide the fact that she was about to die. We were going to lose Laureen if her sister didn't give her a kidney. 
and we had to wait. The sister had to lose a lot of weight because she was morbidly obese, and they couldn't take the kidney from a from an obese person. And we were worried that the sister wasn't going to lose weight because you know you have to lose a hundred and something pounds. It's not easy, but the sister did. And Lorene is in Cedars Lebanon Hospital in Beverly Hills, and her su- surgery was a success. And she's going to be with us for another thirty or forty years. And I'm so happy about this because we love Lorene. Lorene Landon is one of my favorite people, as you well know. She's a Christian. She's a good girl. She's a a true blue friend. And if she loves you, she's devoted and dedicated to you. You will not find a better actress, a more beautiful woman, or a finer friend than Lorene Landon. And if she's watching this, kisses to you. And if not, I'm going to come to see these and beat the shit out of you. Anyway, it's, it's all good. So we're happy to see her. I'm happy. I'm happy. I love her. She's really a doll. And soon she'll be out working. I think we're in a movie together, right, Jim? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, we're in a movie together soon. And I love working with Lorene because off camera, I mean, we crack each other up. We do the craziest things. Like when we shot Motel, uh, Motel 2. There was a scene where she's supposed to come into a bar and I'm on the bar soon and give me a little peck. Hello, honey, because she's my wife. Well, Lorene came in, started grinding all over me, sat on my lap, was making out, grabbing me, tongue kissing me. I mean, licking my neck. It was a riot. And I said to them, keep it and use it as an outtake because it really doesn't go with the script. But I thought it was so funny. So I hope Joe Kelly does use it at the end of the film is an outtake because we didn't stop. I mean, we, we look like two dog cats in heat, dogs in heat, whatever. Anyway, Lorene has a great sense of humor, and so do I. So the two of us together make the set a very funny, happy place to work in. We also want to don't speak. We I want to welcome like Anton. Anton, I don't know if I said hi to Boomer in the chat room, but hi, you guys. I want everybody to say they hate Jimmy Starr. Everybody, oh, one, two, terrible. three. We hate. Nobody Jimmy. will ever say that. I, everybody loves me. Let's say this: Jimmy Starr's fat. Jimmy <laughs> Starr. I am fat. fat but, hey. let's, so, all, let's all say. Ron you think I should Russell. raise the light so we don't have that funny shade thing down there? Or no? Which it's okay. Thing? See, look over here. I put my face down there. Look how nice it got rid of wrinkles. Are you nuts? <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna get on my knees. My face is oh, yeah, I could put my kisser right there. Look, third, I could look 58. So it's gonna we're gonna do a quick commercial, you guys. Yes, so but, we wanna... but not just to conclude the silliness of my stupidity. We all love Jimmy, and I absolutely love and adore him. Dave un- said until my end. Dave says I'm not fat. I'm big bone. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Dave, Dave. Dave from the Stars Now UK. Dave from the UK. Oh, pervert, Dave. Listen, where do you see the blonde that's coming on? You're going to drop the. Oh, yes, this yes. one is like not even real looking. She makes Barbie doll look like an ugly bitch. <laughs> this one is so beautiful. So, so, Dave, get your pacemaker, you know, tuned and get your, your amyl nitrate ready in case you pass out from a heart attack because you're an old man, a dirty old man at that. Yeah. And everybody in England knows that. You know, we've made it very public. That when you see Dave walking in London, run away because he's a perv. So we want to uh, mm. first of all thank everybody for tuning in every week um, uh, and leaving reviews on iTunes. Uh, you can hear the show weekly. We're on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, Amazon Prime, and SoundCloud. We also want to thank everybody who tunes in live on W4CY. It's the greatest uh, station on the planet. We love being here. We've been here for almost 15 years. And uh, so we want to thank everybody. um, I started. I was 15. For tuning in every week because it's a lot of fun. And uh, lots of people jumping in on the chat room. So, like, again, we have two great guests today, you guys. I'm super excited. Hope you guys like some of my memorabilia collection. Uh, There's a really rare, that red poster that you can barely see is a really rare Lost Boys poster signed by Billy Worth and Brooke McCarter. And then uh, it's a Walking Dead poster signed by the cast, uh, the original cast. You can't take it off. Oh, you can take that off. Yeah, there you go. Uh, That's (laughs) That actually does I'm something too. Get I think. You. <laughs> Somehow that does something. Oh, here, here, wait, wait. Let's see if the battery still works. Hey, you. Can you help me get down from here? I can't take this hanging around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Claudia, I'm coming to 
Germany to get you. <laughs> There's a weird science poster signed by Anthony Michael Hall. There's a Joya Bruno poster from Expose who signed for me. A look at you. Um, and then you have all my Batmans over there. And so it's a lot of fun. I freaking like love all this stuff. It makes me very happy. Um, I married a boy man. Man, boy, whatever. Oh, they can't tell that the light. They can't tell that the eyes are flashing. On the, okay. on, no, they can't. I'm watching what they can see. They can't tell. So anyway, uh, Halloween is my favorite time of year. Lots of great horror movies. So it's a lot of fun. This is what Jimmy Starr does a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, so I think our first guest should be coming any second, and we're going to take a quick music break. Um, we are going to play. Uh, LFOs, if I can't have you, and and hopefully oh, our guests will be song. back. If we I get love her, that I'm song. To make sure she didn't send us any messages, and we'll you. see you guys soon. Yeah, it's a big world for real. You probably think I'm out there being a player, huh? <laughs> but yo, if I can't have you, <laughs> then I don't want anybody. That's my word. So check it out. <laughs> Smashing time for some action When I hooked you up, then I hooked up my last one All in on, gotta join cash for Forget your last one, he ain't much Man, cause it's me, not him, you touch In the night time, when the lights go out No doubt, it's nice if the name you shout Yes, yes, you're in, to the break of dawn in Yeah, yeah, that's it, don't stop, don't quit Baby girl and rich, we always into something If it's not you, then it's nothing If I can't have you, I don't want Shine bright like constellations Girl, you got my heart, congratulations No need to lie, you the mean it to my song When it's on, then it's on, and it's on right. Da, 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 da. 
Are we back? Yeah, you guys. So that was LFO. Uh, Tracy's working on getting in. She said the link's not working, so I'm sending it to her again. So uh, we're working on getting Tracy in, you guys, and uh, i got to send it to her. So are you going to keep that on? Well, I dumped you for him. He's hang cuter on. than you are. Look at him. Hang on, hang on. He's got a much nicer. He's got nice teeth. Look at his smile. Look at that beautiful smile he's got. Look at those teeth. Ouch. Sharp. I'm going to try and just send her the link. So. so I dumped you for him. This is Clowny. No. Okay. Clowny, that's the new movie I'm in that I'm excited about. I can't wait to see it. I, you know, <clears throat> when you're an actor, you shoot a movie, you never see it until it's out there at the red carpet. And then you sit in your seat and you sink down and you say, oh, my God, I was so bad or the movie was bad or whatever. But I have a feeling that Clowny is going to be a really good movie, one that I'm happy to be in. Mm. I like my part in it also. Right, Clowny? This is Clowny. He's cute, isn't he? <laughs> People think I'm crazy. I have no idea why. Jimmy, what are you doing on the phone? I, I, I'm trying to get her a link so she can come on to the show. She so, doesn't have a link? Uh, she has it, but it's not working. I'm sending it to her again. Why isn't the link? I, I hate all this technology shit. Links and, and jinks and crinks and whatever. Everything. I mean, so, you know, Jimmy's car has so many buttons and dials and things to do. Before you even go, it's an hour's worth of, what is this? Push that, pull that, make the seat go, make this go, make that go. My Audi is an 04. 2004. It's a magnificently beautiful car. And they have a baby. <laughs> it's a convertible. I put my key in. I turn it. I tap the gas pedal and I go like a rocket. No buttons, no alarms, no seat adjustments, nothing. Oh, she's here too. Okay, go ahead, finish. It's a pleasure. Jimmy's car, I'm telling you, I don't know how to put it in park yet. How do you know how to put it in park? Yeah, you just hit the little button. What button? Uh, on the end of the little thing that I gotta changes put a it. button, hit a button. Well, it does it automatically. Yeah, you, as soon as you, as you. My car, I just got the gear shift and go pee. And okay, it's well, I know. Anyway, my nose is running. All right, we're gonna bring on our guest. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, let's bring her in. Yay! Oh my god, she's so ugly. Hey. <laughs> you, know, you ugly dog. <laughs> He's joking. <laughs> She doesn't know you. You can't do things like that and then drink something with the people that Jimmy, don't know you. She's got a friggin' mirror. She knows I'm joking. What <laughs> <laughs> so, a nut. So I, like that I hate to that say this, face. but I can hardly hear you. So if you guys can chat for just a second, I'm going to try to figure this out. All right, get a work on your work on your volume. Get a headset. Don't Let's know why. You. Hang on. You know you Sorry. look like Doris Day. That's okay. Hold on. Look, have anybody ever told you you look like Doris Day a little? Oh, she, he, he pulled I her out. Oh, that's okay. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, Give me a sec. Juan, Sorry. Juan, you got any ideas? What's, what's wrong? She can't hear you. I think it's my microphone. Okay. Oh. Turn your mic up. Yeah. Oh. Can you hear me It wasn't now? my microphone. Okay. I can hear you really good now. Oh, I hear you now. Oh, Yay! Oh, yeah. When you came Yay. on. I'm so when you came on, I'm I so thought she was so ugly. Is that a Halloween? Like she's wearing the ugly girl, or she, or she's pretty underneath that ugly mask. And Jimmy said, "I'm sorry, do you want me to put some dirt no. on?" No, no. Jimmy said she doesn't know you. She's going to think you're serious. And I said to Jimmy, "She's got a friggin' mirror. She knows I'm kidding around. <laughs> she's far from ugly. You look like Doris Day. Anybody tell you that? You know who you know Doris Day love? is." One you know of my favorite is? songs is from Doris Day. It's Again. When, oh. What did she say? It's Again is one of her favorite songs from Doris Day. Again? Yeah. yeah again, is. this couldn't happen again. <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime. <laughs> this is a crazy <laughs> Oh, oh my God! He, okay, hang on, let me introduce you for everybody first. All right, everybody, oh, now sorry. we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented and beautiful Tracy Birdsall. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hello. Um, this is my cool, outrageous man about town co-host Ron Russell, and this is our child. Clowny. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy get, had cesarean. We're gonna do a cesarean on Jimmy. That's why he came out ugly. He came out ugly. Because you got screwed up. Oh, you're funny. You guys screwed. said no pets, or I'd bring my child. I have a little kitten. Oh, that's okay. We have two dogs. Listen, They're running around. Listen, darling, do me a favor. We have a fellow in England. His name is Dave. 
He's an older man and he's a pervert. And every time we have beautiful blonde girls on, he has little heart attack. Would you kindly tell him that you're really a man in drag? <laughs> <laughs> this way he won't have a heart attack from you. He's freaking because out. Because we don't want is. we don't want to kill Dave. Are you freaking, is he freaking out? I'm sure. Dave is freaking out. No, just out. say hi to Dave and let's let's let him freak out. Yeah, say hi to Dave. Yeah, but don't show the cleavage because he'll die. <laughs> Oh no, Dave, Dave just dro- you just killed him. Don't you have a heart? You I'm just sorry, Dave. Him. Dave, I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. I he don't hear you anymore. He's dead. Okay, I'm- hold on. We have a chat room full of people. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, she's so everybody. brilliant. Sweet. Yes, she is. Fabulous. I like you already. I know you're going to be nice. Yes, yeah, she's Some fine. beautiful girls are bitches, but you're not. I'm really mean. <laughs> I don't, I don't think you're a meanie. So I you guys, no, she, she's a sweetie. So I you guys can follow Tracy on Instagram. Her her uh, her Instagram is Tracy Birdsall with the number one. So it's T R A C E Y B I R D S A L L with the number one. I've actually been following her for many many years in I social media. A lot media. of men follow her. Well, <laughs> I'm gay, so I don't follow her for the same reason as all of them. <laughs> in, in a, I bet you when you're in a department store, some young cute guys check you out and they walk around just to see you again. Yes, yes, yes. Don't don't be shy. Don't be full of crap. Admit I'm trying it. to talk. No, admit it. Let, admit her talk. it. Let her talk. I actually love the mask thing. What did you say? The mask? Oh, the mask thing where you told her she had a mask. No, <laughs> seriously. I would want it. I'd like to follow you with a camera in a department store <laughs> and watch all the young guys deliberately find reason to be near you to look at make-believe clothes. They just want to check you out. You know what's funny is I have a son, and he's an extremely attractive young man. Was he about 45 and- years old? You're going to tell me now? I can talk <laughs> good. You know, I was going to tell you because people always think that he's my boyfriend. Oh, that's funny. And he has really long hair, and he's always like, oh, they're looking at us that way again. <laughs> it's like he's like well, 30 something. My daughter Leslie and I, always were taken for husband and wife because I looked very young and she looked very adult. And we were in Venice in Italy and mm-hmm. we got our room and we went upstairs. It was one bed. They said, take the clown off. Like they're tired. Oh, I the love clown. my clown. I, know, but- I kind of like it. It's very nice. <laughs> I got to please. Anyway, I said to my daughter, they made a mistake because our names obviously are the same, you know, right. and I went downstairs and I told the guy, I said, that's my daughter. You know what he said to me? Capico. In Italian, that means, what a pity. <laughs> it's not bad for me. He thought I was lucking out and I had to split you, babe. He was living vicariously through you and you ruined right. it. <laughs> well, my daughter was first run up in Miss America, Miss Long Island, Miss New York State, and Power's number one model at 16. Now so she's 16. really ugly. Oh, yes. <laughs> ugly, ugly, as, as ugly as you are. I thought you were her twin sister when I saw you. But, you know, when you're a Powers model at 16, you look 21 and 22, you know, they with the, the hair and the makeup and stuff. Yeah. And I looked very young then. Anyway, it's a boring story. Let's hear about you. No, let's hear about you. So hold on. So first I of all. I didn't find it boring. I found it very interesting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nobody else so I want to that. know about you. So first of all, I want to know, I want to know, where are you? You're in California someplace, right? I am. I was in Malibu until the fires and my house burned down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. It's really sad, actually, but I'm okay, you know, and and then I kind of hopped around and I went to a few different places and now I'm kind of living on the outskirts and I'm actually really happy. So it's it's nice. I can still get to L.A., but I'm not in L.A. And I really we go to the action. We live in Palm we Springs. We live in Palm Springs, and we go off And Alabama. I love Palm Springs. Palm well, Springs is wonderful. Yeah. Well, and we shoot down Florida. there quite a bit because we shoot in, like, the Salton Sea and, you know, what is it, Aqua Dulce and all the little areas down there. So we actually stay in Palm Springs sometimes when we shoot sci-fi stuff. You know what? Yeah, if they ever do the Kim stuff. Novak life story, you should go down and audition for it. Because you could look like Kim Novak. You know who she is? I do, you know, yeah. You know, kids today don't know my stars. They say, who, who? They don't even know who Jane Russell was. And I have to tell them, she's my best friend, Jane Russell. Who? Jane Russell was That's his best friend. Years. My best buddy was Jane. Jane and I were, were like, inseparable. So, so see, we started off this interview singing again. So I think that you would know that I would know. <laughs> What she said? She said you started off the interview singing again, so you, she thinks that you would know that she knows who Jane Russell is and all those, <laughs> all those stars. No, she's a young girl. They don't know these old bears. How old is your son? 
She's not going to uh, tell. 33. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, listen, Grandma. Hey, Grandma. Hey, hello. Not a Grandma. You must have got knocked up at 10. <laughs> no, but I was young. Oh, yeah. good for you. I, I mean, to have a, how much? A 32-year-old? 33, 33. You know, I had, um, I hate to say it, but I'm going to. I have three lovely, happy accidents. So my kids were all accidents, and they're all my favorite people in the world besides my father. Yay, though. There's no such thing as an accident child. It's a gift. There is. That wasn't what you were doing when you were doing that. No, it's a gift. A gift. But you're happy, so no, it's wait different. A, minute, wait a, minute. a gift was given to you. You know, Exactly, knows. but it's the, happy, they're the happiest still even to this day. I just adore my children, and I adore my father. And I wouldn't change anything for the way that it is. But, yeah, I was a really young mom. My children are a gift because I had to fight that bitch I was married to for my kids. She didn't want kids. She was a model, Hendrika, and she was afraid of losing her body, her face, her ass. I don't know what she was afraid of losing. Uh, she lost me, that's for sure. And I, no, I have, my daughters are seven years apart mm -hmm. because she didn't want any kids. I think that's very cruel if you marry and you don't want children. Uh, yeah. You should tell the man this before you marry him that you're never going to have, have that conversation. I think so. Yeah, so, but you know they don't ruin your body. My son was born a month early, and I actually had to kind of prove myself to get into neonatal ICU because I was in a mini skirt, a size three mini skirt, and they're like, "You are not his mom," and I was crying. I'm like, "I'm his mom." <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it doesn't yeah. ruin you. I think that was five days after he was born. So who's 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 the love of your life now? You got a guy, of course you do. How many do you have? Oh, I'm I'm a, I'm a single guy girl. Yeah. You're single? No, no I'm, I, ha I have somebody in my life, but, I'm, but I'm, a very, I'm a very, I'm a very monogamous person. I always have monogamous. Been. So, wait, she has a boyfriend. Does that mean? Yeah, she's a single guy girl, and she's monogamous. What does that mean? It's single. Oh, she doesn't date about with a bunch of other oh, guys. She's oh, not out oh, fucking I'm everybody learning, in town. <laughs> I'm learning okay. all this. New One thing about it: so he looks young. He's 82, I, so he's learning. No, so he's not. He's, 82 and he's still a working actor. Yeah. Yep. There's and no I don't get the lingo of today. You know, it's all new stuff to me, new jive. But um, in, my <laughs> so day, wait, in my day, we called you a one-man woman. Well, you know, if, if if I wasn't the way that I am, I wouldn't be able to work so much. Like, I'm a very focused individual, and I believe in love. But I also have, you know, extended family and all these people that I feel responsible for. And so I'm happiest in the situation that I'm in. Yeah. Good for you. you know, well, I think this guy is very lucky. Tell him I said mm -hmm. We, yeah, yeah, tell him that like a few oh, times. Yeah, no, you tell him I so because if ever you want, I've got guys for you <laughs> that would kill money. They got money. Lined up, right? <laughs> I have guys that are young, money, talent, and treat a girl right. Oh, uh, you should see normally, like when he, if, if he was like in there someplace, he would say, Let me talk to him. When are you going to put a ring on that finger? He'd be telling him all kinds of stuff. No, don't say that. I'm happy. <laughs> okay, well, I, I get a lot of people married. I do. They all. The girls all love me. They say afterwards, they whisper, Ron, thank you so much for saying that. Maybe he will ask me to marry him now. Oh, I said, he's growing at 10 years, and he's not going to ask you to marry him? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> After 10 years of service, you just you have to be married. So hang on. Yeah. We gotta, I want to talk about you a little bit because a lot of people, in, talk case, about your movies. in case they don't know who you are, let's stay. So first of all, you guys, Tracy's an amazing actress, and she's one of those actresses who's not been pigeonholed. She's like an action star, like badass, like beat the shit out of people action star. But she does all kinds of comedies. She's done a little bit of horror. She does a little bit of everything. So it's one thing I think it's very cool that you're not pigeonholed because I'd normally, like to work with you. you know, one normally day. the hot blonde doesn't get to be the action star. You know, usually you're just a put her in girl. a movie that I'm in. I think the chemistry would be oh, good. No, she, she could, could be play great. my daughter. So hold on, you guys. And another thing, and she has a TV show, and this is an old TV show, you guys. But I wanted to talk about it before we talk about her action stuff. <laughs> Because I thought I found it so amazing because I was going through your IMDb just so I would have some different <laughs> points that I had to bring up. And you had a TV show. It was five episodes, and it was called Etiquette, a surprisingly relevant guide to good manners in the modern world. And I thought, oh, my God. Like, how did you do a show like that? Like, and that was, like, I think in 2013, I think it said. I don't remember. I didn't write that part down. But, like, what a great idea of a show because I feel like people today are so incredibly rude everywhere we go. Um 
uh, that that and that kind of fits with Ron and his Turner classic movies and the way the the classic movies and people used to behave. So like, how did you come up with an idea to do that? It actually wasn't mine. I was I was part of the production team, but it was the brainchild of Mildred Lewis. And she is a professor at Chapman University and one of my favorite human beings in the world, just a lovely human. And it's she's also a writer and she writes plays and scripts and everything. But it's absolutely brilliant because it's comedy based, but it teaches you everything through the journey. And it's I'd say my my character um, was was very almost Lucille Ballish. You know, she was very quirky. But I absolutely loved doing that, doing that series. And um, I, I wish it would have kept going because it was so much fun. And I learned a lot in it, too. I actually bought an etiquette book. I'm like, is this true? You know, it's like- <laughs> no, you know, I, I was raised in a world of what you are doing on your show. So to mm-hmm. me, anything we had to learn, it was everybody did it. So, of course, you were part of it today. Mm-hmm. In order to get your TV show successful, I would suggest to you do it again, but do it sitting on a toilet bowl. <laughs> and then yeah, wipe I know, yourself. I know. Wipe yourself. I know. Because that's what it's so <laughs> It's unbelievable yeah, because it, he have a heart attack every time we're watching these movies. With and I'm not. I don't mean like. No, I love and adore. What's the, the redhead that we saw? Julianna Moore. I love and adore Julianna Moore. Yeah. I love her book. And then I saw her in a movie sitting on a toilet bowl, wiping herself, looking at the toilet paper, and then throwing it in the bowl, flushing it, and getting up. And I lost all interest in Julianna Moore <laughs> because movie stars um, don't do those things. When I was a kid, if yeah. I said Marilyn Monroe peed, people would say, oh, no, she doesn't. You know, Marilyn she so Monroe so doesn't do anything. People believed back in those days that an actress was above and beyond everyone else. That's what we have to bring back. We have to bring back the glory of Hollywood, not the glory of Hollywood. The virtue. The virtue, mm-hmm. yes. I think that no, we're ready what for you it. were doing in your show. I think your show should have been taught and should have been shown in schools. I think it's it was fun. wonderful and it was so much fun to film. Bring and, it back. And, uh, Do it again. So I'm glad you brought that up because most people no, don't I, bring I, like, show up. I like I oh no, I, I know, I mean I know that you're really known as for all the action stuff, and we're gonna talk about that too, but I wanted to bring it up. Bring um, back your show. We um, need it. Okay, we need it. She also has a comedy yeah. you guys call Who's Jenna, where she plays Jenna. And tell everybody the premise a little bit about that. Okay. I mean, um, Jenna in Who's Jenna was actually an aspiring attorney, and but her soon-to-be boyfriend, it's a roommate, thought that she was Jenna Jameson. But we, of course, had to take the Jameson <laughs> out because we got threats of lawsuits. And so it's Joe D'Onofrio, who is hilarious, and he plays um, his best friend. And he's constantly throughout the movie trying to convince uh, Bill Sorvino, is is the lead opposite me, uh, that I'm basically masquerading and I'm this famous porn star. And, of course, that's just the, the background of a story that's a premise for a really great romantic comedy about two people that fall in love. I think it's hilarious. Now you play a, a man dressed as a woman. No, no, she plays, she plays a woman who's an attorney, uh, trying to become an attorney, who everybody thinks she's really Jenna Jameson, the porn star. Oh, I thought she was going to be Caitlyn Jenner. No. Trans- <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. I, I heard, Depends, but no. I heard, I heard the Jenna, and I thought you changed the first name. I think it's a and great you were, playing, kind of, you were playing Caitlyn it's Jenner. It's kind of a play on stereotypes on how people think that just because of the way that you look that you can't be this intelligent person that makes intelligent decisions and, and falls in love in a respectable way. So it's kind of like a play on the stereotypes of how Good. people look at, at movies. But it's a great comedy. I really enjoyed it. I think it's my, fabulous. My, my daughter has your color hair and green eyes because my wife was Dutch. And my daughter is one of the uh-huh. most intelligent women you'll ever meet. And they think she's a, you know, a bl- when they meet her, and they like, think she's a dumb blonde. I know, and like you too. Like, do you know Darcy Donovan? Have you ever heard of Darcy Donovan? I thought you no. might. Love her. Anyway, she's like you, a beautiful blonde. And well, she's smart. And she's like the crypto queen, and she owns like all these businesses as well as being in, you know, so it's a terrible stereotype that just because you're beautiful well, you know and you're what, blonde you know, that you don't have any brains. I'll I think t- it's ridiculous. I'll tell you who's at fault. Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, <laughs> Mamie Van Doren, and Dana, Dana Jaws. These women were back in the 50s, all blonde and all played stupid. 
So they started the thing about. Yeah, you know, I think in some ways, I don't, I don't really look at it as as too tough of a stereotype because I am really bright, and so I'm really good with techno jargon, which is part of why I get to do a lot of sci-fi, and um, and play attorneys and stuff like that because I can memorize and I can reel off techno jargon even if it's semi made up. You know? <laughs> it's like, so I, I don't really see it as a negative because you can. If you push harder and you do a, and you do better work, then you're the you're one of a very few people that can do that part. And so, in some ways, although we get tossed aside a lot because of our stereotype, when they're looking for that, but they also want somebody who can handle a mouthful of dialogue and 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 live the part, it really narrows the playing field. Do you have trouble remembering lines? <laughs> I love memorizing. I do it before I ever say a word out loud. And I do the same thing for auditions. I sit there in a corner and I just go into that world until all the lines are in my head. And quite often, if I have to work opposite something that's not a human being, I'll learn their lines too so that I can play them in my head and bring it to life. And then um, only if they make me rehearse will I say the lines out loud because I want it to come, I want to become the character. And then I know what the character is going to say. And for me, it's a seamless process where as soon as I am that character and I have on their hair and makeup or dirt, whatever it might be, and then I just get to live it and I don't have to think about it. And I don't have to think about what I had planned or what didn't work. It just works. I like love it. So you uh, have, I uh, never, ever, ever forget lines as uh, long as Jimmy's there holding my cue card. <laughs> Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> No, I really, I use cue cards. I use cue cards. Yeah, I used to remember lines, but now that I'm older, I uh, my my I don't retain too many, uh, your mind goes, you know, and I don't retain lines. Mm -hmm. I know them for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And as I walk mm -hmm. to my position, ready to shoot, they're gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't but he works it. all the you time. Know, I, yeah. <laughs> I call it rolling them in the back of my head. So my, my kids or my boyfriend or whatever, they'll be like, oh, what are you doing? And I go, oh, nothing. I'm just rolling my lines because I literally memorize them. And then as I live my life, they're constantly playing in the back of my head. And I find that I've gotten better at it rather than worse at it with, with the years. Because, um, well, when I did Who's Jenna, I shot Rogue Warrior. Um, they were only one down week between the two. And so oh. I was the lead in two feature films with one week in between. That's not so good. I memorized this. I loved it. I memorized the second one first. You all lines in the wrong movie? I would. <laughs> no. <laughs> you They're completely the first different first characters. The lines. Yeah. And so I memorized the second one first, and then I put it down, <laughs> and then I memorized the first one, and then I had a week to get back into the second one, and it, it worked seamlessly. It was amazing. Oh, I, I like that. I know what the sad part is. We finished the shoot, right? And four days later, mm -hmm. give Jimmy the lines. Yeah, he remembers. They afterwards. come back. They come back. It's really weird. And they always come back, don't they? Yeah, but the, the movie's over. The wrong we, time, we shot right? it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so so funny. Funny. But it's really amazing. Being my age is amazing because you think back at when you were young, and you see a mm -hmm. tremendous difference. You don't. You're not aware of it as you're aging. But once you mm -hmm. do age and look back, you see the difference. Uh, young is mm -hmm. wonderful. So I want to, okay, I want to move mm -hmm. forward. I want to like talk about Rogue Warrior, Robot Fighter. First of all, did you, oh, like, did you have to do a lot of training to be an action star? Like, I'm sure you work out because, like, you don't just look like, well, maybe you just look like that without any work at all. But, look, how you make the but uh, beautiful. Look. do you have to, like, did you, did you want to always. Tim Novak right there. Look at that. Uh, okay, okay, let me no, talk. No, no, no. Shut up. Hold, <laughs> don't smile. Give me that straight face. You looked exactly, no, 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 no. <laughs> you look exactly like Tim Novak. Okay. That's a hell of a compliment, darling. I don't give that to anybody. Thank so, you. So, Novak is the most beautiful you. in the world. So do you, uh, did you always want to be like, kind of like an action star? I mean, that's like a, like kind of a cool thing. It's, it's a really cool thing and it's a good story. I'll make it short. Um, okay. As a little girl, I'm the youngest of three daughters and um, I was a tomboy and a half. I mean, anywhere I could run or jump, I was in the swim team, the, you know, I ran track. I, I, I just... I, I loved anything sports. My dad taught me to fight in the garage because he was a wrestler in the army. And um, 
so I was kind of not that popular when I was a kid, like to be really athletic and to be kind of boyish and stuff. So I, I, I put it aside and I never, ever, ever thought that it would be part of who I got to be later. You know, you always think that these are things that you are that other people aren't and they're never going to serve you. So I sang and I danced and I did all the normal girl things. And then as, you know, roles started coming up and people were like, well, can you shoot? Can you sword fight? Can you scale that mountain? I was like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, I've literally ran up and down the tallest mountains in the Scotland Highlands, you know, and, and I can wear out the strongest man, you know, and it just makes me really happy. And then you get to the fight scenes and I can, you know, I can throw them, you know, I can, I can take on big guys, you know? And, um, I also grew up in, it's called Channel Islands Harbor in Oxnard. Well, I went from Burbank to Oxnard and we didn't know about the gang activity nearby. And I had the crap beat out of me every day for the first year that we were there until my parents got me in private school. But that's when I found out that I really, really ran fast because one day I ran right <laughs> off campus <laughs> and I'm looking over my shoulder and there's all these little gang kids from La Colonia chasing me and they got further and further away. And that's when I joined um, track was at that point. But I'm just very athletic and it was never really, I don't know, it wasn't really a thing to be proud of when I was a kid but it was always a part of who I was and I went to bed by going to the gym at night and then I'd come home and crash because I had too much energy and and so I think that it's been really awesome that later on in life that people are like oh will you do this on camera and I'm like yeah can I do it again you know it's like do you, do you eat healthy yeah I'm a vegan for most of my life that's why you have that skin and that's Thank why you. Yeah, that's why I believe you are what you eat and people that eat junk look like junk. Yeah, I don't eat any junk. I don't eat any sugar. Good I, girl. I, Good for you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, okay, so. You know what? When you're 82, it's going to pay off. Oh, I'm look, so excited to look, see what I'm going to look, look like at 82. At 82. You, you look young like I do at 82. So, wait. So, we have not really 82, really. I know he's really no, 82. I'll be 83 in May. Uh, hey, I wouldn't lie about this. We've been married for 10 years. Our, our 10 year anniversary mm-hmm. is Saturday. Mm-hmm. Oh, congratulations. It's also my birthday, but it's, it's our, we got married we got on my married birthday. On his birthday. I so what is the date? October 15th. Oh, very nice. Yes, said, well, congratulations, you guys. Thank you. He said, When do you want to get married? I said, Oh, I'll give you the ultimate gift of your life, me. So we'll get married on. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm an actor. Actors always have to leave. I mean, oh, that's really. I never go far. Now hold on. Okay, so now we have this movie, Rogue Warrior, mm-hmm. Robot Fighter. Tell us a little bit about it. I actually pulled the. Uh, I gave my, our our engineer the the trailer off of YouTube, and he's going to play it for everybody to see it after you tell us a little bit about it. Okay, I mean that. So Rogue Warrior, Robot Fighter was like. Him giving you him for your birthday. It was like you take a you take a girl like me who's really into action and fighting and and also takes my craft so seriously. You mix it with some AIs, right? Because my dad was my dad ran the largest power electronics convention in the world growing up. My dad helped design some of the chips on the stealth bomber. My dad was a, a part of that whole technology. And him. so I saw robots when I was a little girl at his conventions. I was, you know, we saw electric cars long before anybody heard about electric cars. We had a computer long before anybody had a computer. And so I'm really into robotics. And so when this project got put on my lap, I think I about cried. I was so happy. I just absolutely love it because it takes all the things that I think make me me and puts it into a different character where I get to emote through that character but it's some of the most fun that I ever had. But what's exci- even more exciting is Age of Darkness, um, which is based upon Rogue Warrior, Robot Fighter, is a TV series, and it's already shot and in post. When and that's see- yours, too? Mm-hmm. You're in- when, when, when can we see it, and where can we see it? Well, it's done, so I would guess next year, because they have to get it through post, and there's a lot of special effects. Wait, I have so- another question though, about that, then, because you have will another. Be, will it be on Netflix? Oh, who knows? Or one of those things, one of those stations, do you think? Or well, feature film, theater, where can we see it? I want to see it. Well, it's not out oh, you yet. Mean it, oh, you mean when it, it comes out? When it comes out, it's not done yet. I'm done, but it's not done. 
He doesn't know yet. That's like our movies. We don't know when they're coming out yet. We don't have any control. I think it's, I think it's an eight episode season. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, so wait a second. Before we oh, go I'll back to the Rogue it. Warrior, let me go back. So is Evolution War, is that like a sequel to Rogue Warrior or something? So is Evolution War, that's a film sequel to Rogue Warrior. And then we have okay. the television series sequel to Rogue Warrior. And then um, we have the the Time War coming out. And that's really soon. They're in the final stages of post-production on that. Um, and we've been working on that for like five, six years. A long I mean, time just... Christopher Lee's in it and he wasn't alive. Like well, a, actually, um, the project is the brainchild of the director, Neil Johnson. And he um, this was like his baby for 20 years before he ever knew me. And um, he used to carry the script around. It was one of his first scripts, even though he's made lots of films since then. And he was working in the studio with Christopher Lee on another project. And he said, you know, I have this narration for this project that I want to do someday in the future. Since I already have you in the studio, can I slip you some money and can I get you to do this? So Christopher Lee's narration on that project was actually the first thing ever done on that project. Oh, my God. That is so cool. You worked with Christopher Lee? No, because he was already dead. But they they recorded his voice ahead of time before he died. I met him at Shelby Goodman's house at a big party. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, Nobody has ever done a better job with Dracula than you did, Christopher. And he very nastily, was this very tall guy, and I'm tall, I'm six foot, he was six four, looked down at me and said, I have done more than just Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked away, and his wife came over to me. She said, forgive him, he gets very sensitive about it. I said, yeah, but he's not sensitive about all the money he made doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, but it's funny how our jobs live on. He wasn't very <laughs> nice. He was very people arrogant. remember things, and that's who they see us as. And we don't always want to be seen as what we did, even though we're proud of what we did. It's really kind of interesting. But someday our legacy will live on. We won't be here, and we won't care. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to play the Rogue Warrior, which I want to say, I don't know if Brooke Lewis is in the is in the first one. I know she's in. Brooke Lewis is a fabulous. We we uh, She's been on the show several times. Uh, Marilyn Gigliotti, I think, is in one of them, and she, uh, we know her really well. And in the Time War, I wrote Stephen Manley, who I'm pretty sure has been on our show, Daniel Logan, Barry Corbin. I mean, it's got these got really great you know people in these films. I love all these people. Um, that they're doing. But what I want you to do is inter- introduce uh, Rogue Warrior, Robot Fighter, and then Juan's going to play it for everybody, right. and then we'll be right back. Okay. So stay so tuned. We're going to watch the Robot Fighter. No, you really are beautiful. It's a pleasure to look at you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> no, really. There's so many ugly people in the world that when you find a beautiful one, you you, you know, you really look Go ahead, Juan. Play it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We were attacked. Someone attached one of your prototype brain extractors to its arm. That grunt you call a boyfriend, he's been in captivity this whole time. I thought he was just blowing me off. Good to see you again. Yeah, whatever. Jump a gun! No, very bad. There's a bomb out there. It can instantly fly an AI positronic network. It's like a big obstacle. Can't go running all over the galaxy looking for some mythical fix-all. New York, Paris, overrun. London is fighting. The AI scourge has been planning our genocide. We have maybe less than a month. Clever girl would steal one of Ralston's shuttles. Watch where you're going. Traffic pace. Oh shit! You two fly back. I have a weapon in mind. Show yourself, chicken shit! Freakin' told him! I freaking told him! Told him what? Tell me! What we did to his daughter! It was obscene! You fucking shot me! We're going old school! Motherfucker! Come back and fight like a man, you tin plated metal fuckhead! I'm a pleasure box. Oh, <laughs> nice. I'm all out of party favors. Uh, yay! Show yourself, chicken shit! Yeah. <laughs> 
What a great line. <laughs> and, and Tracy, I'm on this Kim Novak kick. You even have a husky voice in that film like Kim. I swear to you, if I ever hear of a script that's floating around, the life story of Kim Novak, I'm going to give them your name. I'm not lying. Thank you. You look Thank like you. You, know, her, it's, you sound like her. You know, it's funny because I, I grew up singing. I love singing. And um, I have an extremely wide range all the way down to contralto. And so when I do characters, sometimes I have them speak in an upper or a lower range. I love the husky. It's sexy as all hell. <laughs> Thank you. And in the Time War, uh, this new series that's coming out, there's a lot of different variations of my character because they're being plucked through time. Right. And um, all very different. And I, I really had a lot of fun because I gave them all different mannerisms and different ways. It looks like a really good movie. I'm going to watch it. Thank you. Now, I'll tell you about a, mis about a mistake that I made twice, and that is, so I'll be doing one of the characters, and the next day I'll start, and the whole crew's going and stuff, and I'll go, twice I did this, I go, wait, cut, I go, wrong register, <laughs> you know, because the characters speak differently. It was really funny. So now, did Evolution War, that's not out yet, right, or is that out? No, you know, it's funny, the pandemic not only allowed everybody more time to finish their projects, because I have right. another film that's coming out, I hear, in November that I shot in Australia, and um, everything kind of sat on the shelf, and I thought everybody would kick things out quickly because everybody was looking for content, but they didn't. They polished their things more, and they made them better, and, and um, so I'm kind of excited about that. Oh, I think that's terrific. Okay, so then... It's uh, fun having films come out. It seems it like they come out, though, doesn't it? I have three films coming out, and it's been like two years. A year and a half. One is two, year, one, one is two years old already, and it hasn't come out. Mm -hmm. so it takes a while to do them right. You know, you have the to. Distributor is the problem. Because oh. you want a good distributor so your film goes to the right place. Yeah. And that's what delays a lot of films. So but, I want to go to a. So you know how long? A year waiting? No, more. No, because it was before COVID. COVID's been almost Oh, before three COVID. Years. So, so your film three is years. three years you're waiting. Wow, yeah, you're that's waiting. a lot. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I enjoy the process so much. I'm really happy when they come out. Um, but I enjoy the process so much of working that I don't really worry about it. I have so many projects that I've shot that are in the can. They're in different stages of post. Well, if you work I, at a percentage at the end. You know, I, yeah, I just, I just enjoy the process, though. So I'm not, I don't, I don't ever, like rush people if they think that they need more time on sound or they think they need more time on colorizing and stuff yeah. we got the time to be the performers that we did and they uh, gave that to us and so the I, special effects look really good though like the special effects in that film look really good yeah thank you uh, yeah. so it's fun all right so hypothetical questions that i always like to ask um <laughs> and uh so uh first part bucket list male and female actor that you would like to work with uh, living or Dead, and then if you could have ever been in any movie ever made in history, what movie would you have liked to have been in? Hmm. Okay, so um, Daniel Day-Lewis across the board. I mean, he's just a brilliant actor, and I like the way that he works because he he lives the part of the character and he doesn't stop to think about anything around him, and that's how I like to work. I just like to... Right. Exactly. I, I think he'd be brilliant. Um, also, Leonardo DiCaprio's recent work i wasn't really a fan of his and his old work but the revenant he was brilliant yeah, in that yeah, just that was loved good. it so i'd love to work with him um meryl streep of course um except for ricky and the flash like everything she does is brilliant i'm not sure what happened with ricky and the flash but um <laughs> i actually liked it i didn't mind that it. it was so dumb uh it was so dumb that it was okay but it wasn't traditional what you would expect it wasn't it. traditional meryl streep yeah yeah um, as far as old movies, I honestly, I old, know this is old really or new. It could be old or new. It doesn't have to be. Just a movie you would like to have been in that's ever been made. I mean, it has to have been made or we wouldn't be able to pick it in the first place. Okay. I'm going to give you a category for old and a, and a name for new. Okay. Um, category for old. I used to study Charlie Chaplin when I was a kid. My my great-grandfather was a Disney com one of the greatest Disney composers in the 30s. And so I was exposed to a lot of the older movies and watched a lot of the black and whites and the silence. And I was really, as an actor, a budding actor, I would say as a young girl, um, those things are brilliant when you can't use speech because that's where acting really comes from. It's between the lines. Absolutely. And, and now, 
geez, it's not fair. Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible. I want to jump from a building and I want to do these things and it's not fair. <laughs> How cool though that would like be. And I actually like. Uh, but I agree with you. I, I hate when I'm in a movie and my fellow actor reads lines mm -hmm. and I tell them off camera, don't read lines, act. And you don't necessarily have to speak. Your face can do it. Don't act, live. Exactly. Right. Be, the, be the part. Be you the know what my favorite thing is to do? I like to, if I don't like a line, rather than asking <laughs> if I have to say the line, which we all ask that sometimes, I like to show the line in my expressions because the editor will always take the line out. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's good. I am famous for changing lines. Mm. And a lot of people get upset, but in the final take, they say, how did you know that? I said, because I was there, stupid. I'm old. Yeah, you guys true. weren't born yet. I was there. I know what's real. You don't know what's real. He's also been acting funny. for 63 years. I'm acting 64 <laughs> years I'm in film. My, my first film was 1959 with Sophia Loren and Tab Hunter. Oh, so I poor started, guy. No, I started. <laughs> you had to work with those people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, started, I started at the top, which was wonderful because That's I wonderful. learned so much from all of the people that I've worked with over the years, you know, mm -hmm. stage, television, as well as film. Mm -hmm. Sad that Angela Lansbury has passed away. I, saw I loved saw her. So I met her briefly at a Disney thing at Universal years ago. Mm -hmm. she, when she was singing in a, cup, in a teacup or something, I forgot. Mm -hmm. She was the most ladylike, charming, elegant woman and, and warm and gracious. For the minutes I spent with her, I felt like I knew her forever. That's the, that's the Hollywood I miss. Mm -hmm. I miss all, those stars. So yeah. they had something that the young kids today just don't have. Do you think? Do you agree? If you work with the young agree. Agree. Like I have a lot of friends that are older Hollywood actresses, and um, I won't name names because they don't always like being talked about. But um, and they have something that younger people don't have you know yeah. there's a specialness to them you know so a, definitely a glamour a specialness I think they did it yes. different though i think back in the day you know i think nowadays people just want to be famous you know so they act to be famous right. i think back then people they love to be acting right. they wanted to do it you know i, I for was the very, craft. i was very lucky to have known betty davis and i've mm -hmm. been at parties elizabeth of taylor. hers elizabeth taylor well, Elizabeth mm -hmm. Taylor was never a good actress, and I never told her that. But I never considered <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor a wonderful actress. Uh, but Betty Davis, of course, I, I adored. Uh, I've met all, all the Rita Hayworth, all the great legends of Hollywood I grew up with. And today I go on a set. We have a Sarah French friend who's a wonderful actress. Sarah French, I think, is going to be somebody big. She's a young girl. Mm -hmm. But the majority are... Just because you're on, when you're on film, like, see, you, you have presence, film presence. I saw it in there and I see it here. You have a presence. Some people come on our show and I tell Jimmy afterwards, they didn't have any screen presence at all. Mm, I know what you mean, though, yeah. You don't see what screen presence is. That's it's, almost what, a, it's almost a stillness. Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. something that grabs the audience. There's something yeah. about you that we, that's, we want to look at you. We want to hear you. In other words, you're interesting. Some actresses just don't have it, and it shows in their work. Meryl mm -hmm. Streep, you talked about. Meryl Streep is absolutely the one that believes in who she is. If mm -hmm. she works, she is it, or she doesn't work. She is the part. Mm -hmm. She's a method actor, as I am a method actor. Are you a method actor in any way? You know, if I, I was a method actor for a long time. I've studied every single thing possible form and I worked with Margie Haber in LA many years ago and I've been I, working ever since. I, I remember that name. Yeah she's wonderful. Haber, Haber yeah I remember. She, she changed my life because she took all of these methods and all of these ways that I had and ideas of how to do it and she's the one that helped me get to the core of the character and just live the part and I'd say ever since I took that on and you know you have to you have to have an awful lot of trust in yourself too um i've just worked ever since and it's just it's been glorious it's not because it's not about you it's about who you're portraying absolutely and, and it and it's a beautiful thing so so you could call it method but i think it's even a step beyond method it's a it's a 
it's a presence in being the character and you really are the character. And I think the hardest part is that their aches and pains and the things that they go through become your aches and pains and things you went through. You actually get emotional scar tissue from it. And, um, but it's such a beautiful thing. I, I submitted on something the other day and it's a really tough role. And I said, I think I'm ready to do something like this again. Cause I think I just healed from the thing I did a few years ago that was really damaging to me, you know? So it's just, it's an interesting well, life. I have younger actors or actresses ask me sometimes, how do you get into the character the way you do? And I say, you have to have a great imagination. If you don't have an imagination, you're never going to become the character. You've got to say to yourself that this man is dying. He's dying from a heart attack. He is ethnic. He is from France. He drinks wine. He, you know, you have to create and live the person. You have to sit there and say to yourself, I am that person. Now I'm going to drink wine because I'm dying from a heart attack. And if you don't have the imagination, you can't portray the part. I agree with you. I have an incredible imagination and, um, and it's my favorite place to live and play. Yeah, that's, like that's your it. talent. Your talent comes from your mind. If you don't know, understand your character, oh, it shows so badly. We just mm-hmm. watched a movie the other night. A friend of ours was in it. We won't mention who. Who did a brilliant job. Very big actor. But the, the, the rest of the people in the cast, I said, Jimmy, they're reading lines. Yeah. And when he was working, I saw an actor. I saw a character. And then the rest of them were reading. <laughs> they don't even move their hands. I mean, they keep their hands to the side and they said. <laughs> Parateam. Yeah, yeah, I think it scares me the most. I mean, could you vomit from that? You go nuts. You're an actor. <laughs> God damn it. That's what it is, though. You know. I, I mean, like, like one character threatened the other character. And the character went like this. Oh, yeah. that was it. You know, come on, baby. When you're threatened yeah, it's, to be killed. It's never good enough to show something. You have to feel it. And if you feel it and try not to show it, then you really see it. Exactly. But, but if feel you try it. to show something, nobody feels it and nobody sees it. You have Don't to over, actually feel it. Underplay it is so, better than overplay so it. So real quick, because we only have a couple of minutes. I love her. I, uh, know. I know. Uh, we'll bring her back when when the, when the time war comes out. Time, What's it called? The time, yeah, the time war comes out. We'll bring her back. Yes. So number one, did your, did your kids, are they? did they follow your footsteps into entertainment at all? <clears throat> I'd say when they were younger, because I was a single mom and I was always racing to auditions. Yeah. And so I'd bring them and then they got booked on certain things. But as the years went on, no. As the years went on, they all have their own lives and their own directions and their own careers. And good for them. I mean, this is not an easy industry. No, I think but it's... My, my son has stayed in it a little bit. And um, he actually... Um, I'll give you a little hint. He plays Jesus in the Time War. So. Oh, cool. Okay. So it's, 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 pretty, cool. it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty remarkable. But it's... It's, um, I don't know if he'll do anything after this. We'll have to see because it was really hard on him. I mean, this is a hard, hard industry. People don't realize what we go through in order to portray what we do. Question. Uh, My daughter, Deirdre, is in a movie I'm in. She plays my daughter in Mm -hmm. The Curse of Magic. Would you want to work with your son and how difficult? She just did. No, I I just did. Opposite him. Is it difficult? Yeah, it's and I don't I, I I only play opposite in one little tiny part. Um and I and I will tell you the feeling that I had is I didn't feel like he was my son because I'm not myself, I'm my character. And this exactly. character is night and day away from who I am. Exactly. And so I don't think that it actually affected my performance at all, but I did enjoy seeing the one moment where we're on screen at the same time. Yeah. Well, I don't know when we work because my daughter Deirdre doesn't like me to preach to her. And Mm -hmm. in this movie, I am, uh, it's 1943, I'm an Italian father, and she comes to our house on Sunday for dinner as a blonde. And my wife, played by Lainey Kazan, says, oh, when your father comes home and sees that, he's going to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. So now when I see it, of course, I get angry, and I tell her, wash it out, blah, 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 blah. I'm only afraid that my daughter's going to turn around and say, frig you. (laughs) I don't know how she's going to react to me being this tough dad because she has a temper. And I have to warn her, we're we're working, honey, we're acting. So don't come back at me and say, fuck you or something. She's not. You know, and I think we work with so many people that we do know. Like I I repeat work with a lot of the same people that I've worked with in other projects because they call you or you call them or you just end up on the same set. 
Right. And we have to leave all of our prior relationships behind in order to but when truly it's your, live our characters. It's when it's your daughter, I'll be thinking as I'm working, I'll be saying, get the line right, Deirdre. Come on, Deirdre, do this. I'll be directing her as I'm working. <laughs> It's going to be Don't very difficult. <laughs> there are two actors that really regretted working with their children. One was Kirk Douglas when he worked with Michael because mm -hmm. he wanted Michael to be better than him. So he felt that he was cutting back on his performance so his son could shine. I could understand that too, being in a scene with your kid. Uh, who's the other actor that worked with their kid that wasn't happy? Some, some other big famous actor. Yeah, that I that holding back your performance for anything, if you feel motivated to do it, I mean, although it's admirable, you're cheating the viewer, you know, so I think we all need to be responsible for our own performances and anything that we put into what the other one does, we need to do before the cameras are there. You know? Well, yes. if you come back after my movie comes out, we'll talk about how I felt. We'll invite her to your premiere. <laughs> oh, yeah, to come to the red carpet. It's a good mm -hmm. movie. It's a feature film mm -hmm. and it's a good film. So, a good cast. So everybody, listen. You can follow follow Tracy on Instagram. It's Tracy Birdsall, B I R D S. It's first of all, Tracy is T R A C E Y, just like yes. you see on the yeah, there you go. It's on the screen. Birdsall with the number one. Are you on Twitter and any other platforms or no? Twitter, I'm Tracy Birdsall one. Facebook, I'm a page. I'm Tracy Birdsall official. Okay, Tracy Birdsall official. And and how do people see? How do people see the Rogue Warrior movie? Because I know that one's out. Everybody could go see it. It's, it's I think like it's on one of the streamers somewhere right now. It was through Sony, and I don't know really where it ended up. But maybe go to your Roku box and ask it. <laughs> okay. Right. And I know Who's Jenna is on streaming, too. And then I have another show I was a guest star on. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson this last year. So I'm in um, episode five, season two. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you okay. go. So you're really working, and I'm glad, because you are beautiful. You're Thank interesting. You. You're intelligent. You're sweet. You're charming. I like it. Sometimes we have people on I don't care for. I don't nope. tell them. Ever. No, I don't ever give them those compliments. <laughs> I say, thank you for being on, and that's it. But and then there are times when I'll get, you know, I've interviewed over 4,000 people that's in the last 15 years. We have two a week, mm. times a month, times 15 years. So. I want to put you in the category with one of my nicest. There you Thank go. You. Absolutely. Out, so of, out of all my four four thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I, yeah. so, I, I really quite enjoyed to, you guys too. Yeah, but I would love to work with you. I think that you could be a, a fine actress to actor to work with. I think Thank you give you. back, right? Yeah, I give all I've got. That's just who I am. No, I could feel that you give back. A lot of actresses don't. They're solid. They they only care about them. But you know I, what I do sometimes? I've actually gone on camera when they're shooting a opposing actor's scene, and I can think of names, but I'm not giving any. And even I, as the other actor, am not happy with what I got back from them. And I will sit there if they're supposed to be crying, and I will feed them, even if I'm off camera. I just truly believe in the finished product. I do also. I've worked with a, a couple of actors who they weren't intimidated. They maybe were, were ageists. They thought I was just an old jerk or something. I don't know what it was. No, you don't know what's going on in their head. But yeah, they just didn't give me anything. Mm -hmm. The actors in particular, I could tell you, just didn't give me a damn thing. Mm -hmm. So I went over to the director and I told him, I said, listen, I'm in this business a couple of weeks, all right? I know shit from Shinola. Tell your, your actor, direct him that he's got to give me something more because I'm looking like I'm eating up the scenery and he's just smiling. And yeah. you know what? I worked with an actor like that a few years ago and the finished product is great. And the director was nice enough to me. I pulled him aside. It was a very emotional scene. And I said, since we're just doing over the shoulders, I said, can you shoot his later? Because my imagination could feed me more than what I would get from him. And he did that and it worked great, man. You were lucky. I didn't have a director that was so uh, considerate. Directors are so nice to me. Yeah, they'll, they'll let me work because they understand where I'm coming from. All, they all fall in love with you. Me, I'm an old tough mm -hmm. guinea from Brooklyn, a wise guy. Mm -hmm. I always play gangsters anyway. You know, I'm a cop, a gangster, that's me. So mm -hmm. they treat me tough because they think I'm this rough, tough guy. When in reality, I want to just get my work done and work with you. I give to you, you give to me. We have mm -hmm. a happy life. Yeah. 
So no, anyway, always. we want to thank you for coming yes. on, Tracy. We think yes. you're fabulous. Congratulations on everything Novak. that you're doing. My, ki- my Kim Novak. For sure. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I look forward to talking to you guys. You're so a much. sweetie pie. Bye. Right. Let us know when you come to Palm Springs. We'll come yes. out and have you over for dinner. The okay. Best yeah, awesome. of okay. Luck to you. The best of luck in everything you do, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You're a Yay. real doll. She's a doll. A real doll. Absolutely. This is a doll. All right. So I think our second love guest. Her. Is is also here, and uh, you know, you could feel when you work with an actor, you could feel if they're real or not. I got such good vibes from her. She's I fabulous. feel that she's a true blue actress, and she's good, uh, and I would love to work with her. All right, you guys. So now we're going to bring on our second guest, and, uh, I'm looking very forward to it. Hey, we're on. Hi, yay! And we can hear you and everything. I'm all excited. How are oh, you? I didn't screw it up. Yay. Good, I'm so happy. All right, let me uh, let me first do a big introduction for you. Hey, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented actor, Paul T. Taylor. Hello, and welcome to the show. Yay. Hello, hello, everyone. I am so super excited. Um, so let, let me introduce you, everybody. This is my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Ron Russell. Hi, Ron. Listen, I have a question. Yes. Do you room razor blades when you cut the pins off your face <laughs> to shave? It's ho- it's horrible. They actually screw in. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> yeah, they're easy to remove. That's so funny. Then we have I we love have, that pin face thing. We, we have he doesn't know horror like I'm no, the horror. You know what? Last year we went to the uh, ha- uh, Halloween hotness at Tussauds Wax Museum. Oh, he fun! Had, he doesn't know. No, that and is. two okay. people came as you. <laughs> they came with the pins. No, they came with the face on with the pins. Yeah. It's, so it's not a easy. I mean, I mean, you can just put on a pinhead mask, but it's not the same thing as actually doing the makeup, which is uh, if you just wear a mask, it looks like you're wearing a mask. But if you actually take the time to do the makeup, it's very complicated. Okay, I'm going to ask you now. Can no, you, wait, wait, we have to interview. We? Not, I'm not ready for all that yet. Hang on. We're married. We fight. Don't worry. That's why people love us. So we, we have fight, a chat we fight, we fight. We have a chat room full of people. So first say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everybody in the chat room. Chat then, with me. Then when we announced that I was having problems with the timing, that we messed up the timing, one girl in there was freaking out that you weren't going to be there. So please say hi to Dawn because she was like, oh, if he hi, doesn't. Hi, Dawn. Sorry. That was my bad. I didn't look at that. Pe- <laughs> I didn't look at the time zone. No. <laughs> so I'm, all, I'm not going to stand for this. I've been waiting for 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm glad you guys caught me. In time. Uh, oh, no. I, I, I'm glad I, ca- I caught it too. And I, I, you know what? I was smart enough as I, I, I'm not going to tell people how to get your phone number, but I knew how to get your phone number. So I went and got your phone number to call you to say, Hey, you know, Excellent. communication here. Nobody needs oh. to know how to but, but if you guys want to know how to get in touch with him, all you got to do is follow him on Instagram. That's he's, right. You know, he's I'm the real, real Paul I, T. Taylor, but you got to make sure you is. put the T in there. The real Paul T. Taylor right, on no, Instagram. No, no. Now you because everybody me. everybody wants to be me. So you know, when I first got Pinhead, I was like, oh, I better put a real in there because I don't want anyone impersonating me. I don't think anyone's. <laughs> I'm not that big of a deal. No one's trying to impersonate me. No, you me. are. You are. I'm almost you, offended. You know. For two people to come to a 500 person party as Pinface or Pinhead, Pinhead. you're in. <laughs> That's Question pretty cool. Now, if he doesn't interrupt me, give his gums a break. Um, what is the process? Are you allowed to tell us? Oh, of the, the makeup? Yeah. And how long? Well, yeah, yeah. It's really pretty cool. I mean, uh, all, all I do is I go and I, I get it. I, I, I go to the, uh, to the makeup artist's studio. You get a head cast done for your head. And um, it's it's and then it gets warm and then it congeals and it's just this uh, like rubbery thing. Then they they uh, then after that's done, the only thing they don't cover up, of course, is your nostrils. And then after that, and we listened to the Rocky Horror Picture Show the last when I got it done. But um, then they the, anyway they do a head cast. So they do a head cast. They use plaster. They I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly how they get it from uh, the head cast to. What I see when I walk into the uh, makeup trailer, you know, weeks later, but basically they do the blue gunk. Then they, I think, I, then they do a plaster cast of my face, my torso, whatever, however much they need. And then they build the sculpt on top of that, I believe, with some, with clay. I don't know what kind of clay. And then somehow the clay is. Be- is is done so maybe they use the some other magical stuff 
what it turns out to be though is foam latex that's about oh that that thickness so it adds a second skin to you and then it gets very thin at the edges so they can blend it with your real skin so it's two large appliances that go above the eye and above the ear and then back and then one large appliance that goes below the the eye and below the ear and back and then down all the way and uh, and the lower lip so it's only three pieces but now, the pins like, are already attached right, when, that's the question the, how when they, 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 they yeah stuff, yeah okay they're already in the, they, they, they're they're very lightweight plastic and they're glued uh like i i broke one off when i was being athletic in the dressing room at one point and they basically or if it's crooked they'll just pop it off and re-glue it in place but if they did anything with weight, you know, they would flop and it would be obvious that there was nothing there. Exactly. They have to be like very lightweight. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I wanna, it's an uncomfortable mask. Uh, no, not really. I, I, I liked it. it. You perspire and feel he liked it. it. You get it. <laughs> yeah. You get an itch. Have it. I, I, I learned, <clears throat> learned from experience. If you have a nicotine overdose while you're wearing it, you will definitely perspire under it. The nicotine over I like there. love it. That's funny. <laughs> Here you are. Okay, so this is come close to the camera. That's okay. Everybody knows what Pinhead is, and this isn't his Pinhead. He's a different Pinhead, but I want to bring it up. Uh oh, we lost him. Yeah, that's right, a good come back. There we go. Okay, so Hello? I want to bring. I want. Yeah, we're, we got you. So this is this is Pinhead in general. I want to say first of all, I'm a huge horror aficionado. You're gonna let me talk a minute now because this is my horror talk. thing. Okay, uh, punch so, your so, so, uh, so first of all, I've been friends with Barbie Wilde and Nicholas Vince and Doug Bradley and Clive Barker for like 20 years. I'm friends with all of them. Um, so cool. I'm, a, I'm a very diehard uh, Hellraiser fan. And right. you know, they, they made another Hellraiser in 2010, which I was not a fan of. And when you got cast as, as Hellraiser for uh, Hellraiser Judgment, I was like, oh, you know, I have a hard time because I'm a diehard. And I want to tell, uh, tell you, though, that you did such an excellent job. Thanks. Um, you could have been the original pinhead. I was like, I was so excited. I was like, if they redid, if they redid a bunch more Hellraisers with you, I was like, I would totally support it. I think you did a phenomenal job. You looked the part, you acted the part. Uh, and I was super excited. So when I found you on Instagram, you know, to have you come on the show, I was super excited about the whole thing just because I'm such a diehard fan. And I think that you're the only one who's really done, done it justice. Thank besides, you so much. Besides, that, I, love, Bradley, I, love I think you're the only one who did it justice. Thanks. I love hearing that, especially because, you know, when I got the part, um, I inherited the hatred of many, many diehard fans who were of the opinion only one person could ever play Pinhead. And and that which is silly. But, you know, I understand what they mean by that. But at the same time, it's it's very silly. That's as if as if only one person can play Dracula or Frankenstein's monster. But that's what came with it. I mean, he's a literary character, so. Or they really, are a literary character. Yes. Do you really think it's hatred or disappointment? They hate you? I, I think I think it's sentimentality, you know? If they grew up watching Doug Bradley in the 80s and and and, and he was just a part of their nightmare and, and the, the reason that they love Hellraiser so much, then then I can understand it, you know? I mean, uh, I, I, I guess it's not hate. It seems like hate when you're when it's online it's and you're from from people like bewitched when the first a husband left nobody liked the, the connection i played the husband in bewitched because they were disappointed they preferred the guy first guy because they were familiar um I, I, think, I think it's uh, more disappointment than him. I don't think anybody could hate you. I think uh, for well, putting thanks. pins in your face. He no, doesn't. Really. He doesn't follow all the horror stuff. Uh, so, no, like, no, right I know, now, I know human nature. I know, but hang I on. have never heard anyone say they hate. I know, me. but you don't follow horror. The horror people can be very evil. I'm telling you. Like, I know this for a fact. That I, I, I'm on all the chat rooms. I see it all. Right. Like right now, there's a new Hellraiser movie that just came out on Hulu. I have not seen it. It has a female pinhead. I, I see 50% of the people love it. 50% of the people hate it. I think that I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? No, I've not. I, I have not seen it. And I'm open to it because I think that is, it's not a sequel. It's a, like a new story. It's a new Hellraiser story with a new person. So I think it can be it like, is. it could be okay. I, I'm it open is. to trying it. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the, uh, when they read made Nightmare on Elm Street, even though I love the guy who played Freddy Krueger, I wasn't a real, I didn't think it was great. It was okay. I watched Jack it. 
Jackie um, Earl Haley is yeah, a Jackie brilliant Earl, actor. Brilliant actor. Brilliant He's actor. Phenomenal actor. And yeah. for everybody who doesn't know who Jackie Earl, Earl Haley is, if you were a kid, he was like, he played, uh, what's something in the league? In, uh, he was in all the Bad News Bears. He was the bad guy. Yeah. The, bad yeah. Bears, the bad, did, tough kid. Did, did you ever see the movie where he played the, the man who lived with his parents who had gotten out of rehab or jail or something for being a... Uh, not a pedophile, but someone who had exposed himself at a grade school. He had a he had an addiction. He was attracted to children. So, but they let it out like they do by law that this guy was any anyway. He, he I, th- I believe he was nominated for an Academy Award for it. Yeah. I think it's called Little Children. That's a um, oh my he's god, a he's a phenomenal actor. And, and what I found out about you is you're a phenomenal actor because I didn't know that much about you besides Hellraiser, and. Um, Oh, he froze again. Let's see. Can we unfreeze him, Juan, or no? <laughs> I don't know if he can hear me when we're talking. Oh, my God. Is it my connection? There we go. Okay, now you're back. So I found I, I did research on you since you were coming on the show. And I'm, first thing I'm going to tell you, you guys can go to his website. It's paultaylor.com. You have one of the easiest to navigate websites of any celebrity I've ever seen. And we've oh, had wow. we've had a 1,000 celebrities on this show, and I have to go looking for information every time. Um, we have four thousand. Well, uh, what? A, yeah, what a great, what a great website you have. I love oh, the excellent. fact that you've got your reel for mm-hmm. all the different. He's got you guys. If you go and you want to see his reel, he's got a horror reel. He's got a comedy reel and a something else reel where you just hit I think a button. Just the, the basic, the basic. I need, really need to redo those. I've been doing so much more work since then, and I look. I'm just different. I've been doing better work. Is now you, you're you're probably Italian and from New York. Am I right? No, but I've played you're Jewish Italian. from New York. You're Jewish yeah. from New York. No, but I've played Jews. I <laughs> I just about I you from New York. I, I've lived in New York, so I guess you could say I'm from New, New York, York. But I grew up in Kansas. Um, but I'm about as you really grew up in Kansas? Yeah, I grew up in Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kansas. I'm so happy about it. Good, I have a very good friend of mine in Kansas. His name is yeah. Tim Blacker. And he was the costumer for all of Broadway. He worked with um, uh, Ivy Long and uh, the other broad. Do you know wow. what I'm talking about, Tim Blacker? Uh, He's I in think, Kansas. He's I know cool. Ivy's name better than Tim's. Right. right. I wonder, though, if I like worked with him when I was younger, like maybe at Music Theater or Wichita or something. Who knows? You know? Yeah, because my... he's, he's about my little younger than I. No, he's about, he's about 70 now. And he's been around forever, Tim Blacker. Well, yeah. he, he used to do costumes for me years ago. Can, so, I, anyway, I'm freezing. I, is it me? Do I have a bad okay. connection? You're, you're okay now. You're okay. You're yeah, not freezing. Once happens. in a while it freezes. Don't worry about it because we want to keep going. Okay. Uh, I think that – so first of all, I want to say because you – you uh, you know how a lot of horror people get pigeonholed into horror – you know, and yeah. I think it's really cool how you have not been pigeoned. I'm going to just brag a little for you for some of the people who know some of the stuff. You guys, uh, Paul was in Sin City. If you guys don't know, I mean, everybody's in that. Jessica Alba, every major freaking star on the planet is in it. Benicio Del Toro, Michael Madsen, Clive Owen, Benicio. Mickey Rourke, Brittany Murphy, Josh Hartnett. I don't know. He was Bruce, in Bruce Super. Willis. Yeah, Bruce Willis, everybody. I know there's so many of them. And then he was in Super, you guys, which is a comedy superhero movie with Rain Wilson, Elliot Page. Well, who wasn't Elliot Page then? Uh, Liv no. Tyler, Kevin Bacon, Michael Rooker, who's been on our show, Nathan Fillion, Rob Zombie. I mean, James Gunn. I, what a great cast. So, and, and that's totally two different types of films. He's doing. He did a movie directed by Sean McNamara uh, about the life of Ronald Reagan, uh, which yeah, has it, a phenomenal cast, like the biggest it, cast yeah. ever. <laughs> hasn't been released yet, so still waiting. The COVIDs, you know. But, but the fact that you did it, you know, is is super like cool. He's uh, got an, a, another whole. Wait, hang on. In the Reagan film, did they bring out the pe- fact that he would never mention the word AIDS? They didn't talk about. I don't think that subject is in the script. Hmm. I think this, uh, <laughs> this movie is more pro Reagan than truth because Reagan. But that's all I'm going to say. It was, it was the most important dialogue of the day that yeah. Reagan refused to use that word. Elizabeth Taylor, who was my friend, told me so also. She was furious with Ronnie because she knew him. 
Okay, yeah. hang on. We're, we're, we're oh, no, on. We'll, we'll make an over. interest for the film also. You know, if you talk about it, people want to see it. So in Hellraiser Judgment, too, you know, uh, you guys, it's Damon Carney, Randy Wayne. Ron was in a horror movie like two years ago with Randy Wayne. Yeah. He's a great actor. Good Alexandra good. Harris, yeah, Heather Langenkamp has a little cameo in it. Uh, everybody should watch it. It's free streaming right now on Amazon Prime. I watched it twice in the last week just yeah. to watch it again. Um, so you can watch it on Amazon Prime. He's got a brand new movie coming out, and they just released a trailer. It's called Neon Cactus. Tell us a little bit about it because I want to promote some of your new shit. Uh, shit, he means I froze. Like, oh, did you hear what I said? So you have a new movie, Neon Cactus. I saw that they released I'm, a video recently. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's, um, uh, I mean, I, you said they released what? Did they release the trailer or just? Yeah, they, no, they released a trailer for it. Yeah, good. I love that trailer. It's great. I love the movie. I, uh, the director sent me a screener. It, it, it's, I don't know exactly when it's going to be released, but it is the best role I've ever had. It's the largest role I've ever had. It was written for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm on the first first page and then i'm still around at the end i don't get killed brutally in the middle of it you know it's it's a beautiful thing and it's character driven and it, it's the guy wrote it because he'd worked with me one scene i'd worked with this with the director chris zudi it one scene in a movie he did before that and from that he wrote this role with me in mind and it just so i didn't have to i wasn't i wasn't acting per se i was just it it was so natural and i watch my work this is not bragging this is simply me being happy no, we're not bragging. i watch my work in the movie and it's like paul you're doing it there's you doing it i feel like it's the best work i've ever done in my life so, so hang on. I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna read so i'm on imdb so i'm not giving away any spoilers you guys the name of the film is neon cactus and after i say this and stuff we're gonna let you announce the trailer we're gonna play it so everybody can see it oh so wonderful okay see it. so wonderful. so uh so Paul plays uh, plays Stanley Cooper, you guys. Stanley Cooper's marriage to Maureen is on the rocks. Both approach Faustian character Johnny Rocket, owner of the Neon Cactus Bar, to murder the other. Murder, romance, and unexpected comedy ensue in this fresh take on crime fiction. So it's not even a horror movie because it's like a horror comedy. <laughs> it's a murder uh, comedy movie. And Paul, you got excited because we're showing you a trailer. How about this? Five million people will see it because we go all over the world. So you're going to really become a very famous guy overnight. Well, he's already famous, but anyway. I mean, you're already famous. But I'm just being, <laughs> I was just being cute. <laughs> so what it's I want what, you to, what I want you to do is so, so everybody can actually see it. I want you to just say, "Hey, I'm Paul Taylor. Here's my movie coming out. Whatever, however you want to introduce it." And then after that, Juan's going to play it for everybody. Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Paul T. Taylor. I just want to introduce the, the movie that I am most proud of in my entire career that has not come out yet. But when it does, it's going to stream everywhere. It's called Neon Cactus. And here's the trailer. Let's hit the road. I got a feeling something bad's coming if we stay in this town. Deal. Deal. I just want out of here tonight. What's the matter? Jordan wants to see me tonight. Why? Why do you have a gun? What do you think? For protection. From what? From bad guys, you idiot. Somebody breaks in, what am I supposed to do? Wait for you to scare them all? What can I do for you? Kill my wife? And what makes you think I could arrange a thing like that? Just a hunch. I could take offense to that, but I won't. I can pay you. Pay me for what? For the job? JR, it's her husband. He left her a, a fortune from the copper mine he bought before he passed. I could see to it that you get a piece of that. I knew JR. I was sad at his passing. Thank you. 
Are you guys all right? Why'd you come? Came for you. I wonder what he'd say if he knew the real reason you're here. Why didn't you go with me? Yay! <laughs> super, exciting, super exciting stuff. It looks, where, looks where, like a fast mover. Where did you guys? Where did you guys shoot it? it? A suburb of Oklahoma City. Oklahoma, and you live in Texas, right? I do. Yeah, yeah. It, so, it, I mean, I've shot a lot of stuff in Oklahoma. There's a lot going on there because of uh, well, there's always been a lot of work there. Hellraiser Judgment shot in Oklahoma City. It's 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 pretty amazing. And the, the fact is that Oklahoma has great rebate incentives for for tax for uh for filmmakers so right. it's growing and growing and growing and even more work is happening there which is very exciting so yeah oklahoma <laughs> yeah. i actually have a movie that we're gonna i'm gonna actually have to think about how we can fit you into that because we have a, a trilogy we're doing in texas okay. a horror, it's a werewolf trilogy but it's fun i i, I produce he acts i produce and uh, wonderful and so we're like a i don't play i don't film. play a werewolf no and you're not playing the werewolf i movie. wanted to I've yeah. never played, no, I always play a gangster and all, you know, same shit. I would love to play Needle Face or Pin, <laughs> was it? Pin, pin, pin Face. Close no, enough. Or, or, he wants to be a, he wants I want to be, be a vampire. vampire a Actually, though, the second movie in our trilogy is going to have vampires. So I'd we can love make you to a play, vampire. I always play me. Me a vampire? No, no I a always vampire. play me. A <laughs> he wants to play a vampire. A gangster from Brooklyn or a cop from Brooklyn. I never get out of character. I hate it. Do you feel that way that you're going to be typecast one day? Don't you want to branch out? He's not though. He's, he's no. I'm asking him. I'm not you, Mary. I'm asking him. I know. I just know. Smack from his face. career though. He hasn't. He froze again. But we'll bring him back. There he is. Okay. He froze. <laughs> Do you feel like since you did Pinhead, you got type? You've been typecast or no? I don't feel it. Like, well, I, I know that more horror opportunities are coming my way. You get but, work. Um. So, but but I also know that. Uh, I've always in my career, I've always been the guy, like starting with Sin City, I've been a guy, the white privilege executive dude who everyone wants to either hurt or kill. So that's been kind of, uh, you know, maybe an asshole. You know, I play, I have played some assholes in my day. So now what's happening is, um, yeah, and I have been brutally murdered in a few movies. Of course, in Whitetail, that no spoilers too late but uh in whitetail it was actually a really really great really great role i was not a disposable character but um it i don't feel like i'm typecast as a lead in a horror film but i wouldn't mind um i'm more of the hey come be in my horror movie at but i, I mean i'm not complaining um i have a movie coming out in uh, um this month um, it's going to uh, premiere in, in Austin um, called Butcher's Bluff, where I play a Texas sheriff. So oh, that's like, an and, 80s, like an 80s slasher, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be lots of gore. It's going to be, you know, silly and uh, perfect for the people who love that that type of movie. And uh, I'm set up for the sequel if that happens. So that that would be fun. Um, but I'm so much more interested in playing characters who are close to who I am I or or characters who are not at all close to who I am but right. not in horror movies I I would love to be doing uh period pieces and uh and comedy I I, I feel like I have a real comic uh, a funny bone and uh oh no we froze we froze again <laughs> funny at all so um but no I, I so it's hard to answer that question i guess no no i haven't really been typecast i'm just getting more horror opportunities but Which i'm just getting, getting more opportunities in general a lot of people in the chat room they were talking about friday the 13th vengeance 2 bloodlines is that a fan film or is that a, that's a fan film right we it have, is a fan film it's a sequel to friday the 13th vengeance and i met the jason guy who plays jason in that i think we had him on a couple weeks ago actually right, we did. Jason, jason brooks yeah uh, so, so I He's think that, I, I, love, I love all the the fan films. He is a nice guy. You're right. I like the fan Super films. Nice. I think they're fun. Um, 
Uh, I don't know how they all like exactly work out the legalities of all of that, but uh, but I think they're I, fun. I think, yeah, I don't either. Yeah. I, I don't know how they do that, but I see you doing a lot of things because I watched all your reels on your website, you know, so I can see how, and, and you were very good in the comedy one. You know, the comedy stuff is very good. And yes. I think in, in if I remember super, that's where you like, like, that you're, you're like Rain Wilson's dad or something, right? I'm you wailing on him. With the, yeah, with and you're like spanking him in it. Which super super was my, a really good movie. Do you want to hear my line? Yeah. Would God hide pictures of Heather Locklear in his closet, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> so when you do the pinhead voice, does the pinhead voice go through like a synthesizer or something? Or they just use your real they, voice? They somehow? definitely. I mean, they, they, didn't, they didn't dub me, but they definitely did tweak me so that I'm so it's all low and bassy and more demonic I guess um I personally thought they did a little too much of that but whatever it's not it's it's not for me to to say I can have an opinion though but um yeah okay, so here's, I, I, they're gonna listen <laughs> like here's something that I like to uh to ask all the like actors that come on then this is like a bucket list male and female actor that you haven't worked with that you'd love to have an opportunity to work with and if you could have ever been in any film that's ever been made in history what movie would you have liked to have been in Stanley Tucci Stanley oh Tucci God. Stanley you could be a Stanley you could Tucci. you could play Stanley that's Tucci. funny isn't it because if I put on these glasses which I don't you could play his Wait, brother. I mean, yeah, you could play Stanley you Tucci. You could be his brother. Yeah. Lines. Anyway, I I actually think he's one of the best silly. character actors out there. I mean, yep. uh, he's kind of like I think he's probably one of the best character actors that there are. He was in one of my favorite movies of all like feel good movies is Made in Manhattan. And he yeah. plays like the senator's, you know, right hand person. He's fabulous. He's in all those Hunger Games movies that right. are fabulous. We just watched The Silence the other night, oh, so. where he plays like the lead, and he's like plays the, you know, becomes a badass killing people. And now shit. that you open the yeah. door to Tucci, if you go on Netflix on uh, YouTube, look for Tucci's Italy. He takes you all over Italy because yeah. he's Italian, and I love it. And I watch it. I watch every episode. He is really. He speaks beautiful Italian, and yeah. it's please everybody. It's called Stanley Tucci's Italy. It's so, on, okay, on so, so that's a male. Give us a feel. What's your favorite Stanley Tucci movie? Do you have a favorite one? <clears throat> the Devil Wears Prada. Okay. Yeah, yeah me great too. great movie. Me too. He I was, used to be a fashion designer, he was so fabulous. Like, that was he great. was fabulous in that movie. Uh, he played it cool, cunty, and wonderful. Listen, he was six. <laughs> yeah, you know he was fabulous. Okay, and then so um. What about a female? What a female would you like to work with? Jessica Lang. Oh, oh my favorite. Yes. I mean, you know what I want to do? I just want to I want to be in a movie with Jessica Lang where we just both smoke cigarettes and insult each other the whole time <laughs> and then she basically rapes me. I don't know. <laughs> she is a brilliant brilliant actor. I mean, I've watched her from the days of King Kong where she was laying on a boat as nothing to a brilliant actress today. And then she did who American Horror who, Story. Who captivates you. Yeah. I love her work. And she did American Horror Remember, I'm speaking now. <laughs> my husband, we're married. We're allowed to beat each other up. <laughs> and when a movie I wrote, I would love for Jessica Lange to play uh, a part in our film. It would be perfect for her. We can get funding to afford her. Well, um, to afford her, I just want to work with her so I could be with her. Because I'm like <laughs> you, I love her. I think she's beautiful and talented and and just but she went out of character when she did american horror story and she was brilliant and no, remember she had act- one leg i mean she yeah, was awesome she's an actress oh, he froze again i think an actors leave character we don't always want to play the same shit like a detective can you hear Brooklyn. us paul he might not be able to hear us now there he is he's coming yeah, he back is. uh i think that I, she's I, great. I think i'm glad amazing. you her because everybody always oh, picks I am meryl too, streep and i'm like, I so love sick of meryl jessica lang i love <laughs> my, my favorite my favorite memory of jessica lang besides i mean like everything she ever did on American Horror Story is that movie. It's a, it's like a Southern film. I don't remember what it's called. I cannot remember it right now, but she plays the sister who smokes and she makes fun of a character named chick. And right. she's like, yeah, I just love smoke. And it's just taking a little drag right. on death. And then she clucks at her. Cause chick hates it when people cluck at her. She's like, cluck. cluck. <laughs> I just, She's my so favorite, mean, and I love her. My favorite Jessica Lange film is when she portrayed the life story of Frances Farmer. 
Oh she did God. such a brilliant job playing an yeah. insane woman. And I mean, and then a sympathetic, she's just a wonderful actress. Okay, so yeah, movie. What movie? If you could have been in any movie that's ever been made, what movie would you have liked to have been in? And what and who would you have liked to play? Which which character role? Wow, I've never been asked that before. What movie <laughs> would I, I haven't? Uh what movie would I now or then? There could be any movie. Oh, ever oh, it could be a class yeah. or, uh, a young, young Frankenstein. Class. Young oh, Frankenstein. Really? Young Frankenstein. No, yeah. would you play young Frankenstein or would you who would you play? Gene Wilder? Was in Young yeah, Frankenstein. No, be... no, I, I, no, I, I, uh, I, I would have played the Madeline Kahn role, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never would have been that good. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I knew Madeline. She lived. I lived on Third Avenue, Seventy Fifth, and she lived around the corner. And I would run into her from time to time on the street. She was always loaded. She'd smoke pot. So she <laughs> no, she would walk around in a cloud, and I'd say, "Hi, Madeline, how are you?" And she'd do this, oh, and how are you?" And she'd keep walking. She had no idea who I was, but every time we saw each other, she'd do the same thing, oh, and how are you?" <laughs> I said, "This broad never stops smoking pot." I loved her. She was sweet as hell. I think it's fabulous. It's so much fun. She was a sweetie. So, um, oh, uh, so you guys, we have like four minutes left, so we can, you can ask him anything you want. You have four minutes. Oh, I want to ask him, uh, so how's your love life? <laughs> you got well, anybody in it? You have a partner? Have anybody? I love myself very much. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not good. You have to love somebody else. Everybody has to well, love man, you. Be quiet. Like with Jimmy and I fight. That's Seriously? That's to, fight with. <laughs> to, to be quite honest, um, I have been celibate for many years so you know i don't really talk about it much because that's kind of a it's not a sad answer but it just is the truth um and so yeah my love life is 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 pretty much non-existent and that's probably unhealthy but <clears throat> I, i've never really had luck with that oh, uh, i think I think now I could because now I'm much more mature and I understand that nobody can be everything to anybody else and you shouldn't expect anyone to be. Um, um, and I'm a very strange person. So if I ever have a love life, it's going to be with someone who's an extremely understanding human being. So When you, when you reach 50, love is different from 20. Yeah. When you're 20, it's all about a hot body, great sex, all that bullshit. Yeah. When you're 50, you find who the person is, and you fall in love with the soul. Yeah. Like this thing I marry over here, this creature. Yeah, because I don't have a perfect body. Let me say. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I me wouldn't, neither. I wouldn't trade this old So guy. I have a question, though. I do wouldn't you, trade him. Do you go play. autograph signing and get weird, like, chicks dressed up as Cenobites saying they want to have sex with you? <laughs> that, nobody ever – well, they may – in intimate that they want to have sex with me, but they never actually say, hey, come to me. I want to have sex with you, but I, definitely guy. some heavy flirtation from all gender. Oh, no, I believe that. No, but you're a good looking guy. You're sexy looking. I thought you were Italian. Italians are sexy. <laughs> Italians are sexy. Stanley I'm, Tucci. I'm Italian. Yes. I'm 100% Italian. I love Stanley Tucci, too. So, you guys, you can check out Paul's website to see all the different things he's got going on. It's paultaylor.com. Well, the T stands for Thomas, right? It does. Yeah, uh, his Instagram is the real Paul T. Taylor. He's on. Uh, I, I just followed you on Twitter. What is your Twitter? I forgot. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I, forgot. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. I very rarely go I'll on. Follow me back. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. Uh, yeah. I that's Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Who am I? Am I Popo Herman? That's a long story. Am um, I? Morris. Am I the the Paul T. Taylor? Yeah. I, just look under my friends and look under Paul Paul Taylor, and it'll come up. He's yeah, I don't know. Razor. I don't tweet much. I don't. And tweet he does much. watch Hellraiser Judgment. He's the best Hellraiser next to Pinhead that there has ever been, and I really mean that from my heart because I'm such a bitch. It's not even funny. You uh, know what? I don't know the other Pinhead, so he's my favorite. Oh uh, well, pinhead. and the other guy who did the one in between, like, oh, I thought that one was terrible. Pinhead. Like I didn't invite him to come on the show because I was like, he was terrible. <laughs> I know his name. I know his name, but I won't no, say no, it. No, I don't want to say no, it. No, I don't no, you. No, the other Pinhead. There's been three pin. So now there's four pin. There's been now four there's four. Pin yeah, but, pinheads, Paul but he is, is Paul is the best. He is, I like him he is excellent. <laughs> I don't know the other three. I know you, so therefore you're the. Oh, best. it's at the Paul T. Taylor. She says on on there for your Twitter. 
So we want to you for coming okay. on the show, though. We want to wish you all the best in anything that you do. Anytime you have anything to, exactly. to promote, please let us know. We'll Come bring back. you back. Come back. Um, it really is for me a real honor because, like, I for for my horror world, you're phenomenal. And um, you're an up- and your whole career, I, I really wish you the best with everything. I'm so happy you're not you know stereotyped into that, and that you've got a lot of other great things and projects coming out. Thank you're, you. Jimmy. You're an up guest and a fun guest, and I'm happy you came on. Thank you, Ron. So am I. <laughs> You this come back. Blast. You come back when we find what when you talk about your Academy Award, you'll come back. That's right. I will do that. I promise. And I want that to be positive soon. thinking. <laughs> That's right. Hey, thank you so much, Paul. Everybody, uh, we enjoyed it so much. Everybody in the chat room, we had a blast. Bye-bye, thank Paul. you so much. We'll stay see you guys. well. Stay happy. Oh, oh you guys, we're not going to be on next week because uh Michelle Kane is getting a star on the Hollywood on the Palm Springs Walk of Fame. So we're going to that with Sean Kanan. So we'll see you guys the week after and we've got great guests. Bye, Paul. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye, see everybody. Guys see you guys in two weeks. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Oh.